I recently found a dusty magazine in my Athens home with an interview I gave when I was 12 years old. I think I will succeed because I want it really badly, was the title. I grew up dreaming of becoming a professional athlete. Weekends, Christmas, summer holidays, it was all about training. That is all I knew, what gave my life stability. Feeling like, with extremely hard work, anything was possible. But all that changed when a broken bone literally and figuratively shook my foundations. Ten years later, more broken bones, ironically, brought me back the stability I had lost. In my career as a biomedical engineer, I have developed a method to create custom rib implants using 3D printing. When patients with advanced lung cancer have surgery to remove the tumor, the cancer from the lung, they often need new ribs to rebuild their chest. These prosthetic ribs reconstruct the missing bones from their chest, giving the patients protection of their internal organs, reduced pain, and the ability to hug their loved ones without having a feeling of a hole in their body, giving them a better quality of life after surgery, giving them stability. How did I end up there, you may ask? I'd like to take you back to how it all started. I first discovered my weird fascination with the gory human insides at 15, when I shadowed a surgeon at an Athens hospital. I watched complicated surgeries day after day for months. How do they know what all these bloody structures are? Where to cut, what tool to use? It's all a bloody mess, literally. I was amazed by the skills the surgeons possessed, handling minuscule nerves and vessels just like they were tying their shoelaces. I wanted to become like them, to quickly intervene to solve a problem. A few years later, I went to university to study biomedical engineering, where I saw my first human cadaver, my first dead human body, during dissection class. And the questions kept coming. Where do they come from? Who donates their body? Would I donate the body of a loved one? Couldn't these bodies be used to their full potential to save a life as organ donors? During my degree, life led me to one of our incredible professors, and a thoracic surgeon, who asked me to make ribs, bones that provide us with protection and stability, bones that help us breathe. And that was my chance to become one of those people who solve problems, who help people find their breath again. Being in a fast-paced educational system, surrounded and mentored by people who are devoted to education and healthcare, was my driving force to pursue a long-term career in biomedical engineering and healthcare education. Through my research, I have created strong, durable, stable bones, reflecting my search for stability, which I now bring to the realm of education, which for teenagers is a time traditionally associated with change. Just as we, we build resilient structures in the body, education serves as a pillar in our lives, empowering individuals to navigate an ever-changing world. In an educational environment, we are all connected by the shared pursuit of knowledge and driving change in ourselves and eventually society. As scientists, we recognize that advances are rarely made by individual brilliance, but rather diverse perspectives and the cumulative improvements generation on generation. As Isaac Newton famously said, we stand on the shoulders of giants. I carry this belief in my teaching, knowing that my students will go on to advance scientific progress. 
One area of healthcare technology where the field of knowledge is already accelerating is that of robotic surgery. In this rapidly evolving area, the learning curve has become steeper than ever, and the traditional teaching method of see one, do one, teach one is increasingly strained, and surgical trainees now face limited hands-on experience due to work hours constraints and the anticipated decline of surgical force. Add to this the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, which further reduced opportunities for surgical practice. The pandemic also highlighted a critical flaw in the current training system, its reliance on cadavers. The scarcity of cadavers rendered this method unsustainable. Now let's consider the fascinating journey of a cadaver. The story originates from here, actually, ancient Greece, where cadavers were first used to understand and teach anatomy. Fast forward to today, and this journey begins with someone's deeply personal final wish to donate their body after death and contribute to science, bridging the past and the future. The body is then transported into a medical facility or educational institution, where it's meticulously preserved, traditionally with formaldehyde, a chemical that is effective for maintaining tissue integrity, but has been deemed carcinogenic. The body is then stored into specialized refrigerated units to prevent decomposition, allowing trainees to learn anatomy and practice their skills. This journey, though critical for hands-on experience, it involves all these logistical challenges, costs and ethical concerns. With over 12,000 cadavers being used annually in European medical schools for training or research purposes, the substantial demand underscores these persistent issues and highlights the pressing need for innovative training tools. Now, let's shift gears to something a little bit less morbid, 3D printing. For those of you who are not familiar with it, 3D printing is an additive manufacturing technology which allows us to convert a 3D digital model into a 3D physical object by adding material one layer at a time. The first 3D printer was created in the 1980s. But since then, the technology has greatly developed, and its cost has rapidly decreased, making it very accessible. There are thousands of different 3D printers, varying in complexity, size, and cost, starting from only $99 and going up to around a million. Today, 3D printers are being used to create from keychains, toys, and printed decorations to entire houses and even human organs. So how can this transformative technology change medical education? Imagine replacing cadavers with these 3D printed models. Practical, risk-free tools for honing surgical skills. They can not only address the limited availability of cadavers, but they can also enhance learning for medical students, providing them with a reliable alternative in these challenging times. Well, I explore the use of 3D printing with novel materials to create these artificial organs. Most of you would have seen a medical scan. Those intricate images that reveal the hidden depths of the human body. We can take those scans and transform them into detailed 3D digital designs. This process, called image segmentation, can extract key regions from the scan and create a virtual blueprint, let's say, of the human anatomy from the 3D image data. Now let's take this a step further. We can take those digital models and convert them into physical objects to represent the human tissues. We identify artificial materials that can mimic all the different tissues as closely as possible. Harder tissues, like bone or cartilage, can be directly 3D printed, 
whereas softer ones, like skin, can be casted using customized uh, molds and soft materials like silicone. The result? A range of incredibly lifelike medical simulators. A chest simulator with flowing blood that can mimic the conditions of a video-assisted or robot-assisted lung cancer surgery. A smaller, simpler model of an ear, nose and throat simulator that includes a 3D printed head, airway and cartilages of the throat, alongside silicon parts for the esophagus and the skin that can be used to practice procedures such as vocal cord injection. And it doesn't stop there. Our more advanced models include a cardiac simulator that is um, compatible with various medical imaging techniques, and a male urogenital simulator that has been designed specifically for training for the erectile dysfunction implant surgery. Now, I have to admit that while we are all deeply focused on developing these cutting-edge models, if someone from the outside saw us all in the lab squeezing a heart or stretching a penis, they'd probably think we're a bunch of crazy people. But in reality, I promise, we're all just really passionate about developing these anatomically accurate, incredibly highly realistic, and surprisingly cost-effective models to push the boundaries of medical education. Why does this matter? Because hands-on practice on these lifelike models is crucial for developing surgical skills and boosting confidence. These phantoms, which is a fancy word which used to use to just say fake organs, have the potential to revolutionize medical training. They can not only reduce, but even eliminate the need for animals and cadavers. Earlier this year, we conducted a study with medical students. We found that 3D printed models provided a tactile experience and better anatomical understanding than traditional teaching methods. Students preferred the 3D printed models for visualizing intricate anatomical details, finding them more beneficial than cadavers. This indicated that incorporating 3D printing in anatomical education makes learning more engaging and more effective, whether in person or remotely. What sets our work apart is that every single simulator we develop addresses a specific clinical need, filling in the gaps in the current training pathway. We create tools that can benefit surgeons of all levels. These models aren't just for learning. They're also for mastering complex surgeries, ultimately helping save people's lives. And the best part? They're incredibly cost-effective, require minimal maintenance, and do not interfere with local regulations or cartular customs, making them not only practical, but also accessible. By incorporating 3D printing in medical curricula, we ensure that the future doctors, including those from lower-income countries where cadavers are not accessible, are better prepared to handle the complexities of real-world medical challenges. When a broken leg at the peak of my athletic career ended my dream of making it to the Olympics, my world seemed to crumble around me. Yet that injury led me to realize a new, very different dream, to change the future of medical education and just help improve people's lives. Education is a powerful tool. It shapes the future, molding individuals of any field, but nowhere is this more evident than in healthcare. Envision a future where every medical professional has access to the best possible training tools, elevating the standard of care and enhancing patient outcomes. This isn't just a vision, 
It's a reality we're building today. The medical professionals of tomorrow are being shaped today. And through education, we can help them realize their potential to do extraordinary things. We must never stop believing in the transformative power of education, especially for those who will go on to save our lives. Thank you.